Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Um, before I start, who is already using the director? Hey. Okay, that's that's so I'm here. Um, I'll immediately explain. Oh, who does already know what it is? Who wants to use it? <laughs> we'll change this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Thomas Gelf. I work at Netways in Nuremberg, Nuremberg. Um, growing up in the Italian Alps in Zutirol. So, my I'm an Italian citizen, and my mother language is German, and they always love it when I do my talks in English because then I'm forced to speak slowly so they understand what I want to say. <laughs> I'm wearing I wear many hats at Netways. I'm a, well, I work as a kind of a consultant, traveling the whole year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm doing a lot of prototypes for I think, uh, web modules. There have been questions regarding different modules and talks before. So if you want to know more details about modules not known to public yet, uh, please ask me later on, even if it goes to I heard reporting and such topics. Um, if you have ideas, if you have some wishes, uh, drop me all you, all you can all you all you want to have so i'm i cannot we cannot do everything immediately but it really helps to get some idea of what you need of uh, how you want to use the product and um well that's why i'm doing so many prototypes i work with the customer i'm sitting there from usually a Tuesday to Friday, and they want to solve some problems. So we, a single web two has been built to be easy to extend, to easily create an add-on, to um, do crazy, crazy shit with it, and code of conduct, you know. <coughs> um, yeah, the problem is the customer is happy when it works for him, just cr from a working prototype or working customized solution to a. A module that's ready to release for public with um, everything made nice and created documentation and so on still takes a lot of time. So this is why I have something between 40 and 60 modules, and we only have something like 10 of them public right now. Um, and well, the director is one of them. We work in this since more than a year right now. We released the version one zero three months ago, and we'll take one. One zero today. The live demo is really live, so I did the last commit 15 minutes ago. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> well, the, the cool thing is when you work as a consultant, you can really test in production. So while writing, <laughs> 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 while writing code here, I talk to to customers that are using this version I'm going to show you right now, and that's ready to take live in production on their systems already. So um, that's great. That's not just testing automated. It's not automated testing of things we know to break. That's uh, testing with real environments where things would really go wrong. So in my beliefs, this is a good way of doing tests. Um, OK, what's what I'm going to show you here right now is a lot of uh, some details on the director. It's a pretty huge product, so we're not able to see everything. And um, it's kind of a mix between some slides, live demo, some slide, slides, and live demo. And so that's, well, let's start. Uh, this is the dashboard of the single director. This is what you get when you basically enable the module. Um, it has some more icons right now. This is a screenshot. Uh, you enable the module, you trigger the Kickstarter wizard, and you're ready to go. Mm. We'll do this live. Uh, a short history. Oh, yeah. Wrong color. The motivations for a new config tool have, well, the biggest one has been there is no config tool for a single tool. A single tool has a new configuration format, a very powerful configuration format, and it isn't a configuration format. This is a, who already uses it knows this is much more. It's a DSL. It's a, it's kind of a program of, of a language. You know, you can define anonymous functions, lambda functions, loops, everything. So this is much much more than a config file, 
And um, you can imagine that creating a configuration front end for a, configura uh, for a programming language is a little bit tricky. Um, yeah. To get started with the director, all you have to do is to download it, to give it a database. Uh, in async web 2 you just create a database resource, add a resource, enter your credentials, test the connection, everything is fine. Database has, can be completely empty. And the um, director cares about the rest. So it creates a database, it does all the database migrations. Um, we did nearly 100 database migrations since the first director commit. So, um, and since, I don't know, migration number 55, we are trying to do all of them for MySQL, for Postgres, without breaking things. So most people right now are using the master, because since uh, version 1.0, a lot of things changed. And um, we never broke the database. So even if you work with the master, you can, be, you can feel pretty secure that um, we are not going to break some kind of schema migration path with a future upgrade. Mm. Oh, one direction. And um, if you're doing using Puppet or something similar, Director has been built with automation mind. So there's a chapter in documentation that explains you or gives you some hints of how to work with Director in a very easy way. So for example, database migrations in Puppet is, uh, as this is not a fake, it works like this. You really run a single CLI Director migration run only if migration pending. Of course, you have to provide a path to the exec, and, and that's it. Um, this will create a schema if it's missing, and um, do all the missing migrations if, if there's anything similar. There's also uh, the CLI commands have a help parameter, and there's a documentation for it. So even the kickstart daemon, or the kickstart, sorry, the kickstart wizard we're going to see right now in the web front end can be automated with Puppet. So I can basically drop an answer file for the wizard. So if director is unconfigured, it takes that answer file to with just three settings or two. And um, it talks to your singer and does the initial kind of handshake and import. I'll go to show you this. Um, well, let's try it out. So oh. on my console, can you read this? OK. I have a database over here. I redo this. I drop the database and create a new one. This is the database I'm going to use. And I switch to I think a web. Wrong window. I'm sorry. This one. Oop. Okay. I log in and what's that? Sorry. Not really. Okay. Resolution. Yeah, it's good. Um, I enabled the director module. This is here in modules director. When this one is enabled, then you can see it here. It's pops up in the menu. If I re-enable re it again, then it's, is it here, otherwise it goes away. And what I see right now is, I, ah, it already knows my database. The database I want to use was, just to show you that I'm not tri not uh, doing something special here. Remove etc, I think a web modules, director config. Um, and now it doesn't even have a database. So what I do here is I choose one of my database resources from a single web. I have many of them. This is Director Camp. Store the configuration. <coughs> and uh, now it's telling me, well, I oh. do not have a database schema yet. Create one. Um, now the database schema is created, and the uh, Kickstart wizard appears and asks me how to connect to my Asinga master. Uh, my master has a local DNS entry in etc hosts, so it's called i2 master. And um, I could insert an IP address, but I do not even need this one. My API user created in the configuration for a singer is director with a very secure password. And then I run the initial import. What's going on right now is that it connects to the single master. It uh, has a look what's what's going on there. And it's going to import a couple of object, objects. This is the existing zones, the existing endpoints, and the existing commands. It does not work with your existing host or services. This, would, uh, this wouldn't work. Because for example, if you're creating host with an apply rule, 
uh, or sorry, services with an apply rule, I have no chance to modify that rule and write a file to disk. I think it doesn't even allow me to change files in slash etc. So I'm just importing objects I want to work with in some way, because for example, you're using the single ITL, so a lot of command definitions for existing commands. And um, to allow you to choose them in a drop down, I have to, to have them somewhere, so I'm going to sync them to my database, treat them like local objects, but not, I do not redeploy them to a single. You could start from scratch with a completely empty config. You can build everything with director. Um, this is the default work to get started. If you do not want it to import anything, um, just throw away everything from your single two config and it will not find anything. So let's have a look what it did. Mm, I zoomed in a little bit because otherwise you you are not able to read it on the on the projector. Uh, you can see here that it imported 54 commands. This will be some more if you enable the country plugins in Isinga 2. These are just the deep, default ones. Um, it's also imported, I guess, one zone and one endpoint with, oh no, two zones. Oh yes, I direct the global zone and um, and one endpoint. Uh, this is in the documentation. Maybe I should add more details. But you should create one global zone uh, existing on all of your nodes before the director comes to do something. Because this makes the configuration distribution easier. So uh, it's very very tricky to distribute zones with a single self. Um, this helps. Then um, there's one endpoint, it's just the endpoint definition for my master. I see a green icon here, so this means that it, this has been chosen as my deployment master. This is where my deployment is going to be shipped. And uh, if I click this, oh, this looks ugly here, let me close this. Mm, if I click, for example, inspect, then it connects like the, do you know the Isinga Studio? Uh, this looks similar. This is just a, it connects to the API, and here I see what's going on. I see internal objects. I could see, for example, every internal object of a single, like the, the checker component. There's one of them called checker. It currently has no nodes. It's just, it doesn't look very good. It's just for debugging purposes. This shows everything that's going on in, in a single itself. Um, usually, you do not need this part. Then it created commands. And all those commands, if I, Let's choose one of them. Here you see it's telling me that this is an external object. So it says this has, this has been imported from a single to through the API. So you are able to use this, but this is not going to be deployed. So you're not allowed to change this here. Um, allowing this would be just one flag. I maybe one time uh, in the next version, I add a button to tell you make this an internal object, and then I throw it away at the single side. Would be helpful. But what I really see here is that this is not plain text. Uh, all those properties have been imported and are really somehow in the database. And getting something like this in the database is it's not so easy, but it, it works perfectly right now. Um, we'll create a, a, known cast, a known command later on. L now let's just create a new host. And director has been built with permissions and um, um, how to say it? Uh, well, the idea of delegating different, the grant the different permissions to different departments in mind. So, um, one of the very strict rules is that there are some properties that can only be um, modified on templates. So, right now, when I create a host, I'm not even allowed to create a host because there's no template right now. So, I have to create a template first. Let's just create some kind of uh, a default host. And um, let's set some check execution parameters like um, the check command. Let's take host alive. Uh, you do not have to set check interval, return interval, and so on, because there are, um, <coughs> there are good defaults in async itself. But I love to do it in director, because then uh, when resolving properties, you really see the defaults in there. And in every object, you're, you can really see immediately what's going to be on, uh, what's going on, what are the defaults, what's going to be used. So let's have a check into interval of, let's say, one minute and retry in 10 seconds. And max check attempt three. Execute checks, yes. Accept passive checks also. Send notifications, sure. Event handler, yes. Process proof data, yes. The last one, um, this is not a volatile service. So that would be one service that would send notifications with every single <laughs> check result. This is more for SNAP traps and something like this. Uh, I'll stop here, just create this 
template. And then uh, let's add a new host. And now I'm allowed to create an object and say, hey, import the default host and create a host uh, local <coughs> one. My browser somehow messed up. And IP address. This is, of course, on my private subnet. That's it. Uh, now I'm able, so it <coughs> sees that there are changes. If I move the mouse over here, um, it's telling me that there are six depending changes. Uh, one of them has been applied to this object. The part of the 60 changes have been the imports from uh, the core itself. They're not going to be de deployed, but they are also changes. We're going to see later on what changes means. And well, now I'm going to, to deploy it, and uh, it has sent the configuration to the master. This is the startup log config uh, validation was fine. Uh, I can see the related config files that have been generated, diff that with other configs, have a look at the config files, uh, much more. We'll see this later on. So basically, this is just, we see more details in the next demo. This is more or less how you're going to work with the director. Questions still here? Yes, question was, um, he was using lconf, and that's uh, showing a tree structure, so all the objects are in a tree. Um, we have, a, there is a tree to be found already in there, showing you a template tree with all the inheritance, so um, there's one big difference. Uh, I think a tool is able to do some kind of multi-inheritance, and lconf isn't, it's a directed tree. Uh, so the structure is simpler, and is, um, so you can have multiple combinations. So the tree right now shows you all the template combinations. Uh, what's still missing is then a link telling you, show me all the nodes on this point. And we have uh, something even more crazy in mind. We want to have some kind of um, filter tree. So I would like to say, um, show me all variants of locations I have. And then I see all objects grouped by location. Then I click on location and say, OK, but on this location, group me everything by uh, data center. And um, later on, I decide, no, I want to say, see data center first and then operating system in there. So I could, we would like to have something like this. And we already have pretty cool ideas of how to do it. There will be something. You're not the only one who wants to have something like this. Okay. There is a tree right now, but it, it wouldn't help you. It's more a proof of concept. Um, okay, uh, let's just do one more change. Let's go to the host. Uh, we want to have another one, so I just clone this host. This has to be local2, and um, the address, of course, is, I don't know, another two, and uh, yeah, that's it. If you go to the history of the single host, I see that the host has been created by the user Tom. If I go on, then I see there has been a change, the IP address has been changed, and so on. So every single change is in there. And um, if I go to the config history, I see a global history. I have customers with half a million changes here, and you really can click, 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 uh, browse through. It's, it's pretty fast. Um, and I see all historic deployments. Mm, but we'll come back to this later on. Back to the slides, if I can find them. No, I'm sorry, it's switched page. Here you go. <clears throat> Next point, configuration. Mm. When we first, had, when we had our Kickstart workshop where we decided to build a director, we wanted to target different audiences, and the two most important ones were, um, we, they had the code name Windows Admin. Um, those who do not really care about the details, just want to do click, click, next finish, and that's it. Um, we love Windows. Uh, do not get this wrong, please. There are a lot of Windows features in the rector already, so this was just an internal code name. Um, there were those people um, using CMDBs and so on, so with a lot of existing data sources, and there are people doing automation with tools like Puppet. Um, we wanted to make all of them happy at the same time. And uh, this is tricky, you know, if you have uh, 
But what I'm doing right now with customers is getting all the users and uh, user groups from my singer from Active Directory, fetching servers from Active Directory, but also fetching servers from the Puppet DB, mixing those properties, uh, fetching other servers from uh, from. Amazon Web Services and create a virtual host for every auto scaling group and uh, all of this together in one tool while still allowing other users to manually create hosts or change some properties is tricky, but it's it works pretty good. Um, oh. Well, okay, this was we already did, did this part of the demo, sorry. Mm, but we can do the the automation demo now. Now let's first. Sorry, I switched some slides. Uh, lost my window. Where is it? It's okay. Um, for some words, we have already seen this architecture. Um, just to explain you how this works, how it's going to talk to a single two. You heard about a single two API. That's what we're going to use. Mm. This picture is more than a year old, but it still works more or less like this. I think I use the Asinga2 um, REST API and talks to an Asinga master. The, you can have multiple masters in your master zone. You can, could have some satellites. You do not have to. And you could have Asinga agents connected directly to the masters or to the satellites. And what Director basically does it, is it dumps complete config packages to one of the masters. This one syncs everything to the other masters, and all the nodes below gets only those uh, zones they are allowed allowed to see. For example, the zone in e in Europe would be allowed to see all the zones for its endpoints or subnodes and so on. So this is this is handled by Singa itself. The director does not um, work with single objects through the API, but it really does still full config dumps. Um, we want to combine this with some kind of live modification in the future, but right now, Director does a full config dump. So um, it really dumps files through the API to Isinga. Um, Isinga writes it somewhere to wow, lib, and so on, and uh, checks the config. If the config is fine, it drops the startup log to that location so that the Director can fetch it later on to understand what went on, and reloads itself and goes on with that configuration. So it switches the active um, stage in that package the Director used to deploy. And, um, and then it distributes it to the other nodes. So with Director, you can configure a completely distributed environment with agents, with satellites, and so on from one single point centrally, if we want. Um, that's it. Uh, automation is where we started. So um, I wrote some parts of the director by myself, and uh, much of this code uh, has been written uh, when working at customers, and most of them, or most of those I work with, do a lot of automation. So first, a lot of preference was on that topic. I'll just show you some examples. We'll try this out live. Um, the idea is um, not everybody should care and think about how to synchronize properties. Well, that's pretty tricky. Objects get added, removed, uh, new hosts appear and go away. You have multiple services. Combining all this can be tricky pretty fast. Um, if someone already tried to, I don't know, use Puppet or some tool to talk to the Singa API, this is great. This works perfectly. But it's a lot of work to get, it, to get this right and to, to clean up everything, um, drop, uh, get rid of all data, and so on. So the idea was, um, if we can understand how the, how our data sources changed objects over time, um, we, are, we will be able to do sync synchronization the right way. So we separated those processes. Import means I import all your data. And if you are running three consecutive imports, I'm storing everything in the director database. It's stored uh, with some kind of deed application using checksums and so on. So it doesn't waste too much time, but it wants to do this to to understand if you, for example, use different sources, I want to know that one host has been deleted in the PuppetDB, and I do not want to delete all the nodes I do not see there. As that would be a problem if I work with other data sources or also manually create hosts. Um, so first import, then trigger sync, 
And there is also, this is new, new in Director 1.1, uh, you can configure jobs. So there's a background daemon, you can run it with uh, systemd or whatever as a service. And you can configure in a very granular way and say, I want to import from my CMDB uh, every five minutes, from my LDIP every minute because it's very fast, from my PuppetDB only every 50 minutes, with some, this is pretty huge right now. And uh, I want to trigger sync runs for all of those every two minutes, let's say, and deploy the configuration every minute if it changed, but only if the last deployment uh, wasn't within the last 10 minutes. So something like this can be clicked right now, and it's, pos it's possible to configure it, and there are already people using it right now. If you do not trust it initially, you could configure a time period and say, I want to, all of this to happen only during office hours initially. That's also possible. Mm. Director is a pretty cool tool if you want to use Puppet. Many people think, uh, well, or I do everything with Puppet uh, or with Director, because that's a config tool. But that's not true. Um, working with both of them together really, really makes fun. Because it's, it gives you a lot of visibility of what's going on in your Puppet DB, uh, all the changes you had, and so on. That's, it's pretty cool. And it, um, the problem with Puppet is if you work with a lot of exported resources, collecting them and realizing uh, I think a one or a single two configs is a pretty slow process. And uh, this could take a long time and make your puppet runs on your single masters pretty expensive. So the idea was, let's still export resources. But that's, that's fast, that's cheap, that's, uh, it's pretty cool to design it like this. But I want to collect data directly from PuppetDB. PuppetDB has an API, so why not go there, do a REST API request, and fetch the exported data? Um, the import sources in Director are modular, so you are able to write custom modules and say, well, I want to create, a f I have a custom CMDB with a custom property, custom database, whatever. Um, you could create your own module and provide your data in your import provider. And all you have to do is copy and paste one PHP class and uh, add a fetch data function, and that's it. Mm. There are already some import sources like SQL and LDLP, they are already there. You can use them, and you could use, add other ones. PuppetDB, I don't know if you can read this. This is the, the config part of a PuppetDB, um, of the PuppetDB module. It hooks itself into director. You create an import source and say, well, it's PuppetDB. Um, I have chosen the PuppetDB module from the drop down here. Uh, I can choose the API version from a drop down, and it shows me also which Puppet versions uh, correspond to this API version. And uh, I choose my client certificates, because this is uh, uh, trust is based on certificates. And then I have a drop down with all the um, resources all right now in my PuppetDB when using version 4. Otherwise, I have to type it myself, because there is no way in all the APIs to, to fetch this information. And I store it. And what it, what is the, what it then does is just import that data flat. And later on, I'm going to configure which properties I want to sync. And here you see from the source puppet DB import hosts, it's, um, it's right to the destination import. It was generic host and generic agent for every puppet DB host. This is just a string. So it says all nodes from that source are going to use those two templates. Um, what you do not see here is that uh, generic agent is based on a filter. So you can say, um, if some custom variable is set, then, um, or effect in puppet, then import one template, otherwise import another template. Um, right now, oops. What's OK. Um, the custom variables, this is something you usually, sh uh, th this depends on how you create your module. Here we are exporting a lot of facts in a vars dictionary or hash. And um, we're importing all of them. So the Puppet module exports hosts that should be monitored, and uh, we collect all the hosts that should be monitored with all the custom variables as Puppet wants to have them. It's one way of doing it. Mm. You have also access to all the host facts, so in theory you could import all of them. This is something I did just for fun, and uh, just to test how much data it can stand. And there you get, of course, a diff with every single Puppet run. And um, 
director is importing that data, showing you a diff for everything you're sending there. So this is pretty cool because this is one tool that gives you visibility of a lot of changes that, of a lot of things that change inside your puppets, um, which you are, which are pretty hard to see right now, even with Puppet Enterprise. Um, another module, uh, it's a prototype, but it works. Um, we have ideas for more features. Uh, right now, all it does is uh, use AVS, import auto scaling groups, and um, find out how many nodes have to be in that group, what's the desired size, um, what's the minimum and maximum size, and, and stops here. So it just creates those hosts dynamically. They come in and uh, go away if you create new auto scaling groups. And uh, the module doesn't care about checks. So the customer using this. Um, everything here is public, so you find them on GitHub. There's nothing, there's no closed enterprise version or something like this. Um, this host generated this way now with those properties is then used to define apply rules, assigning checks, you know, checking if there are enough instances, if there are too few, too many instances running in that, in that group, is it going too, too large or whatever. <laughs> so um, this is what comes on later on. Right now, this module feels only responsible for just importing that kind of data. If you have another cloud provider or want to have something like this for um, VMware or whatever, write it. Uh, open feature requests. Um, we are also open, of course, for uh, if someone wants us to develop something specific, um, hire our developers. They, that's what we live from. Mm. And if you do not believe all this, let's show me a demo. Not with all the components, it would take too much time. I just use a, a small local SQL database. Um, oh, use, ah, sorry, that's not a shell. Um, use Leonard. I, ha I had no time to create a new database for the demo, so this is a database uh, he gave me for tests. Um, there's just one table, and uh, there's not much data in there. To host, and that's it. Um, so what I'm going to do right now in my director is I go to automation and add a new input source. This is my CMDB, very simple. Uh, import type, let's make this a little bit bigger. Source type, here I see um, the core API. I could import objects from the core API. Um, LDAP, SQL, uh, I see the PuppetDB module and the AWS module. I say SQL, and now I'm allowed to choose a specific resource. Um, right now, and director enforces no restrictions. So you are either allowed to use it in a single web or to not use it. But a lot of very granular permissions um, are, are going to be in the next versions. And one of them is, for example, which database resources I'm allowed to use. So this would allow me to give someone the permission to configure its own import sources, its own SQL queries, but only with database sources I configured exactly for him. And this already exists in the codes. It's just not, uh, it's not enforced right now. Or it, it is, there's just no GUI to click it. Um, let's choose one database. That's, where is this? Leonard CMDB. And the query, select uh, everything from data. Very complicated database model here. Um, what I need is a unique key. So you need to tell the imports uh, source which uh, what's your unique key and it's strict about it it would, will fail if data is not unique in that column so device name is my unique key here and that's it let's store it then if i click it i can check for changes it's telling me well there are pending changes okay trigger an input run and the last and right now this or it was last found to be in sync a couple of seconds ago if i check for changes again it says there are no changes, no changes. Trigger an import run, also no changes. It's a little bit ugly on this resolution, but yeah. Um, OK, so and the same thing happens in the background. Uh, if you run it as a job, it does just check for changes, check for changes. Oh, that changes. OK, import. Um, there are modifiers 
there's no time to explain them. Um, you can, there are a lot of property modifiers, so you can mangle data when importing it. You choose a column, and then you say, I want to um, add a bitmask operator, convert, uh, let you want UTF, uh, decode binary object SIDs from Active Directory. Um, there are some samples in the regular expressions, split the subdomain, and so on. And also, this is uh, extensible. So you could, uh, without changing code of directory itself, extend that list. Create your own a single web module, create a um, property modifier, drop it there, and it will be in that drop down. You will be allowed to, for example, if I choose one modifier here, it has, of course, uh, to provide a, a transform function, and it has also the possibility, if you want to, to extend this form. So if I choose, I don't know, um, regular expression, then you have to insert the pattern and uh, the replacement. So every modifier has different properties. You, you are allowed to do this in your own modifier if you want. Um, there's a history, there has been one import, and that's it. I have a preview that's all about the import source. Next is the synchronization rule. I create a new one. Let's call this um, hosts from CMDB. Object type, uh, where is it? No, sorry, host. Um, update policy. You could, um, if there are existing hosts matching this key, then you could merge its properties. So if you, for example, add some additional properties locally in, I think, uh, uh, sorry, in the director and want just to get host name and IP address and some custom bar from the CMDB, that's possible. Otherwise, I could say, no, for this host, the CMDB knows everything, so replace. This would mean replace the whole object when something differs and the CMDB always wins. Purge means um, throw away existing objects. And since 1.1, uh, we finally have it in a way that we purge only those objects that vanished at that specific source between the import run related to the last sync and this sync. Uh, so it only deletes data if it was really deleted at that import source. Otherwise, they will remain there. Um, so purge, yes, and that's it. I can also filter uh, and import just some hosts. Um, and well, same game here. I can say uh, I see the current state. It says the sync rule has never been run before, so we do not know whether it is in sync. So yeah, let's look for changes, and um, it's still in sync. No changes, but I have a host. Why? Because I defined no property. I didn't tell it what to do. So um, there are properties for every sync rule, and let's say I want to add from my CMDB. Uh, let's say the the address and the address comes from the um, of course uh, IP address and that's it. Let's stop here. Check for changes. Oh, there are changes. This is a little bit ugly, um, but it shows me there are two new hosts. Okay, trigger the sync, and I see the last sync run has been right now and in zero zero one second and created two hosts. Um, if I check again. Nothing happens. If I have a look at the objects it's created, it shows me the activity log filtered by that sync. Um, I could also right now deploy my pending changes. Let's have a look. It created the host and another one. Um, the config has errors because this host is not valid. It imports no template. It has no check command. I think I will refuse to use it. But let's go to that host and deploy it. And you see um, the master refused the config. I see the startup log, and it shows me errors for two hosts. And I see, ah, yeah, that's, that's correct. If they have no template. They have no check command. That's correct. So let's go back to our synchronization rule and uh, pick the hosts, properties, add a new one. And instead of um, writing a check command here, you could do so. The sync is allowed to do more than you are allowed in the front end. So sync is a very powerful instrument. But I want to do it in a nice way. So. Uh, let's take inheritance import as a destination field and choose default host as a template. And then let's add another, pro another property because we all forgot about the custom variable operating system. So um, let's import one specific custom variable, call it o OS family is fine. Source column is OS from the database. Uh, merge policy makes not much sense for the operating system. This is important if you ship structured data. So data sources can ship arrays, uh, dictionaries. You also could uh, import structured data from a plain SQL database by using a modifier. There's, uh, for example, a modifier split, like you do a group concat or something like this to create a list of host groups, and then use the modifier split to split them by comma, and then you import an array from a flat database, even if that doesn't have, um, yep, please. 
Oh, I'm, I'm running out of time. Okay, um, I didn't even start. <laughs> okay, let's uh, replace this property, add it, and run another sync. Um, check for changes. Oh, it's going to modify two hosts. Cool, trigger the sync. And uh, the history shows me two modified hosts. If I have, I have a look at them, you see that it now imports a template and added a new custom bar. So uh, let's go to the object, deploy it again, and uh, you can see Isinga is now happy, and that's it. Um, I see here the whole, um, the whole activity log. I see all my historic deployments. Now you can see, hmm, there was one deployment that failed. What was the difference? I can pick the whole, the whole config, go to the, its config, diff with another one, um, choose the latest. I have to add the date here because right now you have to remember the checksum. And it, it shows me the files that changed, even if they are pretty large. And now I'm going to diff the, the host file. It could take some time if you have tens of thousands of lines in that uh, file, but right now it's pretty fast and I see all the differences it did between those complete deployments. Um, Okay, uh, last thing for automation, there are jobs. Everything I did here can be automated. So I can say, uh, do a config generation, um, run it every... I wanted to do this live because it really works. Um, render the config every time. If there has been a deployment within the last, uh, let's say, 60 seconds, then please do not deploy. And running, run it every 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, that's it. If you have enough time, I'll show it live to you. If, if I, do, I, I can right now do changes in my CMDB, run the job in the background, and it would really run the import, run the sync, deploy the config. So this, is, this works right now. And uh, yeah, back to the, to the slides. Bernd told me I have five minutes remaining. Impossible. Five minutes ago, yeah. Uh, OK, <laughs> cool. Uh, Director has its own REST API. It's pretty simple to use. Um, there is a documentation for it. You can um, create objects, modify them. Um, you can trust the HTTP response code, so it always tells you if something has been created or modified. Uh, you can use put and post for ju just uh, modify some changes or overwrite the whole object. Uh, that's explained in the documentation. Um, I skip this part. I had a live demo for this. Um, it has a CLI, so you can say a single CLI director host creates a uh, similar, or so this has a documentation. And um, yeah, I wanted to show you the, the jobs, but out of time. Mm. Uh, one cool thing, this last one, uh, agents. If I create an agent, let's set a new template, and say, I want this to be an agent. Uh, I do not care about check command and so, I change the agent settings and say, well, this is an async agent, and uh, I want to establish a connection to the agent, and the agent accepts my config. Um, okay, name, mm, let's say async agent. Back to my hosts, I choose my imported host and say, oh, well, you are imports, um, add a new import, async agent, and um, if I store it, it has a new tab agent. And this is something Christian will show you more details in his talk. Um, he's the one who wrote the PowerShell code for this. Uh, it does a lot of assistance. It's, for example, if you go to preview, you see what it generates. It generates the host, it generates the agent endpoint, it zones, all those things you have to learn and care about um, when you deploy agents with a single two are doing in an opinionated but completely automated way for you. And you can show it resolved, so you see all the inherited properties and so. And um, well, it is an agent, so it gives you assistance for the kickstart. So here is, if you want the ticket for signing the certificate for the setup wizard, here you go. If you want a, a script for Windows that does uh, the, uh, the installation, the configuration, and uh, the certificate handling, download that PowerShell script, run it, and that's it. But Christian will tell you more about this. There is a sample for Linux uh, below that's still a little bit ugly. Um, I'm ready to tag the 1.1 release right now. During the next talks, I will just clean that slide a little bit up. And one thing is missing in the master, that's that button here. So this one is uh, right now not so beautiful, so I want to get this into the master, and then I'm ready for 1.1. The blog post, the release blog post is ready, so um, unfortunately, no time for more details, because the director has a lot of features. Just try it out. 
And uh, if you have any problems, let me know. Ask your mailing list, open a ticket, whatever. Um, this, this, this doesn't stop here. They will have a lot of plans with Director. It, it already works in production, and uh, also this version that's going to be tagged. And um, it's going to be to get even better. It's modular, extended, no time for a demo. You find everything on GitHub. There is uh, the director itself is public. The current master is will get I don't know like five commits in the next hour, and then I'll tag one one zero. The, the additional modules are not public Asinga modules yet, but we I guess we will migrate many of them to the to the Asinga namespace, and uh, you can download them. Uh, they add additional functionality, or they can give you some inspiration of how to extend it to fit your needs if you have a better cloud provider. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. Short time for yeah, questions? Yeah. Questions? Can I import uh, my complete uh, Active Directory? Uh, the question was uh, if you can import the complete Active Directory. Sure. Um, there is uh, in the, the documentation shows an example of importing Windows servers from Active Directory. Uh, the example goes through creating the import source, uh, adding a modifier, making the binary SID to something you can read, importing the version, and so on. So yes, you can. Okay. It's, uh, you use the existing LDAP import source, uh, create a LDAP, LDAP resource in a single web, and uh, it really works. Okay. OK, question was, uh, if you have a couple of thousand hosts, uh, reload of a singer takes uh, a couple of time. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes, like 10 minutes, less or more. Um, we know the slowest part in restarting our singer is filling the database. That's uh, the last component we inherited from the old Nagios times. And um, we're currently working on a prototype. Uh, we have a new feature. Hopefully, in future, that uh, will substitute this completely without deprecating the old one. So we are always trying to support old, old config, old uh, tools, and um, director will get will not get it slower because director does a full config dump. So um, the version I used right now is right now, I guess, used in a similar environment in your ones, like 2,000 hosts with 50, 60,000 services checks checks once a minute, and. Um, Deployment takes like you reload. Uh, they have a fast database, but they need I don't know three to five minutes to reload, and um, that's what we have to live with right now. There is a hidden experimental feature in the Rector where I can do live modification on existing objects. Um, we want to extend this, but uh, this uh, requires some work. Because I cannot use a normal API because I'm not allowed to, to change the objects deployed as config files with the Asinga API. But Asinga can do operations on live objects. So we did experiments with this. We'll have something like this. But right now, this will not be synchronized. So uh, even if you find experimental feature, you cannot use it uh, in a serious way. So um, it will get better. But yeah, you are right now, you, you can tune the database. It can, with 2,000 hosts, it can be a little bit faster than 10 minutes. But uh, yes, it's, it will still take that long with the rector. They will remain separate. The question was whether the API of the core and director will merge. No, they are separate things. They um, they have been they do different things, and uh, they will not merge. So you can use both of them. You can use them in parallel. There's no problem if you know what you're doing. Um, but um, the one is not going to replace the other one. Thank you very much. Thank you.